China and, and other Asian economies like India and Indonesia will become increasingly important in the world economy over the next decades. And so I think investors really need to focus on this as being the new center of gravity for the world economy. There will be hugely growing consumer markets in places like China, as you have an ever increasing number of people with middle class incomes, uh, and that will create great demand for products from around the world. So the, these are really markets that are going to be too big to ignore in the future. Well, it's certainly true that it's been difficult to do global trade deals recently. The Doha round of the WTO trade negotiations hasn't really got any, anywhere for the for last decade or so. And so I think increasingly there will have to be a focus on regional initiatives to boost world trade, which has been relatively slow over the last uh, seven or eight years. Um, and I think that the sort of initiatives that China's leading uh, with India and the ASEAN countries and, and other countries to try and boost trade in, in that region, you know, supported by the Belt and Road Initiative to also boost investment, which is also a very important component of trade because you need the infrastructure to actually support trade, to have the ports, the railroads, uh, and you know the, the other forms of transport that actually allow trade to occur. So I think those kind of initiatives at the regional level may be more productive than trying to do an overall global deal, which has proved pretty difficult in recent years. Well, the US has uh, pulled out of TPP, but that doesn't mean that TPP can't go ahead without the US. And I think there could be clear benefits in it going ahead anyway. And uh, Countries like Japan seem quite keen to move it forward. So I don't see why TPP can't continue. But at the same time, there are a number of other uh, regional trade developments uh, being put forward, including the uh, ones led by China to link up uh, China and India and the ASEAN economies of which Vietnam is one. In the future, I don't see, I, I think the US is not anti-trade, you know, as shown by a recent US-China trade deal just, uh, just recently on financial services and some agricultural products. So I think the US could do a bilateral deal with ASEAN in the future. So these digital technologies are very important in terms of boosting productivity. And as that productivity generates increased income and wealth and that's spent and reinvested in the economy that should generate other new jobs uh, in new technological areas and elsewhere in the economy so potentially it doesn't necessarily mean that there's a net loss of jobs it, but it does mean considerable disruption in the labor market so while it's good for business in the sense of boosting productivity there is a challenge for policymakers in terms of how to help those people who lose out from automation to retrain to move into new jobs and governments and business need to work together on this, both for young people to make sure that the education system is fit for purpose in this sort of modern digital age, that people from a young age are not just sort of memorizing facts by rote that they can easily look up on Google, that that sort of education is, is really outdated. Instead, it needs to be learning how to work with computers so that you're complementary to computers rather than being substituted for them. It needs to, to work on teamwork, social skills, other things that are less sort of easily uh, automatable so that young people can be adaptable and can be prepared for the workforce. Developments in artificial intelligence mean that computers uh, can actually learn. You know, this machi machine learning technology means that it's not just a matter of you pre-programming a computer or a robot to do a certain thing. Rather, you give it the capability to learn, rather like a human child. And then as it takes in information from the environment, using new sensor technology that allows it to absorb a lot, a lot more sort of information than, than computers or robots could do before, it can actually get that information, process it, and be continually learning and improving its own performance without everything having to be pre-programmed. And so when you combine this sort of machine learning techniques with uh, the new sensor technology, um, and you know, helped also by things like GPS and other sort of existing sort of things so that machines can talk to each other and they can, be, they can know where they are in the world using GPS. Then you get much more powerful and adaptable potential computing robotic type power. You get things like driverless vehicles that can, don't need human operators. And so it has a potentially much more all pervasive impact that isn't just uh, restricted to certain environments where you can pre-program everything like a factory where there's a sort of controlled environment they can actually go out in the real world as it were and operate. <laughs>